Here's an example where we get to use Young's modulus, stress, and strain. What we're asked here is, uh, how much does this material deform? This, we got a, uh, a copper bar here. We want to figure out how much its length changes under these loads of 10,000 pounds and 4,000 pounds. Uh, strain indicates uh, how much length deformation occurred. So here's our little symbol, epsilon, for strain. And we know that that's proportional to the uh, stress applied. And then we know that E, Young's modulus, the higher that value is, the more resistant to strain, the more resistant to length deformation the material is. So um, epsilon, the strain, and Young's modulus E are inversely proportional. But what this strain is really is the change in length or uh, delta proportional to the original length of the material. And what the stress is really, um, it's not given in this problem. We are given uh, force and cross sectional area of the bar. So the strain is really change in length over original length, delta over L, and the stress is really the force per cross sectional area. And then we, you know, we still have our Young's modulus E in there. And let's um, give the variable P to our force to get in the habit of um, correlating P with force. Now let's solve for delta by bringing L from the bottom left to the top right. And now we have an equation we can use to solve this problem. But here's where it gets tricky. We have to apply this equation to two different sections of our bar. If we look at the internal axial force anywhere in here, if we you know section it anywhere in here, we see that that internal force must counter both the 10,000 pounds and the 4,000 pounds for a total internal reaction of 14,000 pounds of force. And our cross-sectional area is given as 1.5 inches squared. So for the first part of this problem, we're only looking at the four feet on the left. And um, so far, our units have been inches, so let's convert that to inches. And I just went ahead and put in the Young's modulus E value that was given for this copper bar. So if we plug the P over A into our calculator, 14,000 over 1.5, that gives us our stress, about 9,300 PSI. And then our L over E is a very small number, and that is inches per PSI. So when we do this multiplication, the PSI cancels, and we get inches. So the 9,300 times 0 0.00003 is 0 0.028 inches. And that's the deformation just for the left four feet of this bar. So now we have to consider the right eight-foot portion of this bar. Uh, it, we can use the same equation, but we have to realize that it's under less stress. It has only 4,000 pounds as its internal reaction of axial force. Uh, and that's because if we look at anywhere, if we section anywhere in this part of the bar, and we look just to the right, there's only 4,000 pounds that has to be uh, counteracted against. So back to our equation to figure out the change in length delta of the right 8 feet. Uh, we got that 4,000 pounds. We got the original length of 8 feet, which we convert to inches again. The cross-sectional area is still one and a half inches squared, and our E value for copper is still the same. So when you do the math here, you get 0.016 inches of deformation. And that's for the right 8 feet, and we have to add that to the um, number we just got for the left 4 feet. And we get the total length change for the whole bar.